Welcome to another Story Lab. This week, we're talking about trust. Well, we look at the story of a man who had to dig himself out of a pretty big problem. Oh, and we're also going to be doing this. Three, two, one! Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about trust, which is putting your confidence in someone you can depend on. Sebastian, do you trust me? Yeah, sure. Why are you asking? <laughs> I read this thing online that you can fill up a plastic bag with water, stab through it with a sharp pencil, and ta-da! Nothing happens. The bag is leak-proof. Very cool. I mean, assuming you can trust the internet. Kids, you cannot always trust the internet. Great. So do you trust me to try out this amazing experiment? Yep. Do your thing. Do you trust me to try it out over your head? Uh, uh, no, no, that, that's different. <laughs> Trust, my friend. This better work. Let's make it. Right. Top secure? Top secure. Pencil? Mm -hmm. Pencil? Who even uses pencils? Pencil? Sharpen? I got an idea. Oh, sharpened. sharpened. Take a seat. I feel like my life is flashing right before my eyes. Don't be dramatic. Drum roll, please. Three, two, one. You can open your eyes. Oh, wow. That worked. Let's see it. <laughs> Nothing but graphite. <laughs> this amazing miracle of nature brought to you by plastic polymers. Plastic polymers are molecules like a chain of beads. They're so flexible that when you stab through, they just push back toward the pencil and form a temporary seal. So there you have it. The polymers are trustworthy, and so am I. Great, now do you trust me? Why? Because I have a pencil too. Oh no. Oh yes. <laughs> Ready, drum roll please, three. Two, one! Ugh. It's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the very first book of the Old Testament, Genesis. God made our amazing world, but sin entered the world. People turned away from God and went their own way. But then God picked one man, a guy named Abraham. And even though Abraham was like 90 years old and had no kids, God told him to look up. And God promised he would have more kids than stars in the sky. Yeah, and the entire world would be blessed through Abraham's family. And Abraham did have a kid, Isaac. Isaac just so happens to be the hero in our story. Hey everyone, I'm 
Erica. Hey, Erica. In today's story, Isaac was in search of water. Isaac and his family and herdsmen lived out on the plains in the land of the Philistines. And for them, water was life. If they didn't have access to a good, clean well, they couldn't survive. Fortunately, Isaac and his family had some really great wells. They had plenty to drink, and their crops were growing well. Isaac seemed right on track to be living out the promises God gave his father, Abraham. Unfortunately, the Philistines who lived nearby and their king, Abimelech, became jealous of Isaac's success. They shoveled dirt into his wells, and he didn't have water anymore. You have become too powerful. Move away from us. Isaac had plenty of men who could stand against the Philistines and fight. But instead of fighting, he decided to trust God to take care of him. So Isaac chose to keep his cool. He and his family packed up everything they owned. They moved on and made camp in the Valley of Gerar, where Abraham had lived for a time, many years before. All right, men, let's open up those old wells my father dug. Abraham's old wells filled with cool, clear water once again. The happy herds and flocks could drink their fill. Things were great! Until the nearby Philistine herdsmen showed up to challenge Isaac's servants. Step aside! The water's ours! You're gonna have to fight us for it! Whoa, whoa, easy does it, fellas. There's plenty of land in this valley for everyone. We'll move along. Again, Isaac could have fought back. But instead, he trusted. He and his family and his servants and flocks all moved camp down the valley. Once again, his servants set out to dig new wells. The new wells also produced clean, clear, cool water. But it wasn't long before the Philistine herders arrived on the scene to take over these new wells, too. Yes! Another day, another well for us! Take it down a notch, please. There's still room for everyone. But we could knock them flat! Yes, we could, but we're not going to. Move on out, boys. A third time, Isaac and his men moved camp, and Isaac's servants dug fresh wells once again. But this time, this time, Isaac was left in peace. In fact, King Abimelech himself showed up to make it official. Why have you come to me? You were angry with me and sent me away. We saw that the Lord was with you. Make a peace treaty with us. Give us your word that you won't harm us. Yeah, I can do that. Isaac prepared a feast for the Philistines. And early the next morning, the men made an agreement to keep peace with each other. Then, the Philistines went on their way. The end. So Isaac kept trusting God no matter what. And finally, Abimelech showed up to make peace. Yep, if Isaac had started fighting back, he might have been enemies with the Philistines forever. But sometimes God wants us to stand up, right? For sure. Trusting God can look a lot of different ways. <laughs> For sure. So, what's our part in the story? Good question. You can trust God no matter what. For example, maybe you practice hard all summer to make the soccer team, but you don't. You can trust God that all your hard work matters, and God has a different place for you to fit in. Or you're starting at a brand new school. You can walk through those doors trusting that you are loved by God, and you will be okay, even if it takes a while to find your place. Oh, I totally had to trust God when I got a cavity filled last month. Right there. It did not feel super awesome. There are so many reasons to trust God. One of the best is because God sent Jesus to give his life for you and me. Putting your faith in Jesus shows you trust God. For sure. <laughs> I think y'all got it. Bye for now. So here's the thing. Trust God no matter what. Ooh, I gotta write this down. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. We'll see you next time. <laughs>